All right, thought I'd talk about our uh, 22 J Flight 264BH, and in general, just why you might be better off not buying a really expensive, fancy camper, and some of the attributes of something a little bit more simple, like one of these guys. Now, if you don't know, the 264BH has been around for a long time, and it's uh, one of the more popular campers on the market. Um, I think it's the highest volume model that Jayco sells, and it's also one of the more basic ones. This is a bunkhouse, that's what the BH denotes in its name, and um, <clears throat> kind of want to give you the reasons why I really like this camper and why we went ahead and bought one. Um, coming from a background of owning a couple other new campers prior to this, and going from a larger, more optioned, fancier super slide camper to this guy and why I think it's great. And you might too. So first a little backstory. Prior to this, we had a 2018 Freedom Express um, <clears throat> 287BHS, which is a, a um, super slide camper and um, weighed 6,200 pounds, had a super slide, had a private bedroom in the front, giant double bunks in the back. Um, a lot of features, options, like a walk-in pantry and stuff. Um, and, you know, it ended up just being a lot of hassle. The build quality on a lot of these new campers isn't that great. And what I found was with that specifically, I was having just a lot of fit and trim problems, issues with like the slide out outside kitchen, faucet fittings and hoses and things like that. And I just wasn't wasn't really into it. It was comfortable, had a lot of space and room for a kid and a pack and play. Um, but we ended up selling it um, last year in the spring of 2022 um, because of the crazy COVID prices and demand on used RVs. I managed to sell it for $6,000 more than we bought it for new. Um, so that was kind of hard to pass up. So that kind of helped me, you know, decide to get rid of it. And then we were going to hold off for a while in a new camper. Um, but uh, ended up finding a good deal as prices started to come down last fall on um, campers again because the inventories had built up. So doing a ton of research over the last few years and uh, probably since 2014 when we bought our first new camper. Um, just I'm not an expert by any means in anything, but I did a lot of research on different campers and stuff. And there's some things I really like about this camper. Um, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So first off the construction. Um, this is a, what they call a stick and tin camper, whereas it has a wooden frame. Um, they use real plywood on the floor and the roof in these. On Jayco, that's what they're kind of known for. They're considered to be a little bit better quality, build quality, although that's arguable in this day and age. Um, I think any modern camper, aside from an air stream and a couple other really high-end overland campers, tend to have some really shoddy workmanship. But these guys use uh, really good materials, the ply, real plywood, not particle board or OSB. Um, and being a stick and tin camper versus like an aluminum frame camper in our last couple, um, you know, the, I actually think it's preferable because it gives you more options if you want to remodel it or do some work. Basic carpentry skills, you can do a lot of modifications in these things. So first off on this particular camper, thing we really like is storage. And holy cow, does this thing have storage. So back here, where some campers might have an outside kitchen, and you can actually option this with an outside refrigerator down here, um, we just need storage capacity. And a lot of campers that are large don't have very good storage capacity, and some that are smaller have practically no storage capacity. So this whole space under this double over double bed, aside from this corner where the water heater is, is just storage. And we or avid mountain bikers, skiers, hikers, campers, backpackers, stuff like that. And so we bring a lot of gear and we tend to use this camper as kind of a base camp for like mountain bike trips and things like that. And so having the ability to have tools and bike helmets, things like that, that we can fit in there um, is really helpful because um, there's not a ton of storage in some campers. Some campers have great looking layouts and they look comfortable and they have lots of fancy little bits and things but when you actually look at the livable day-to-day -day stuff they don't have really much storage capacity pardon the mess in here it's the end of the season I'm about to winterize this and I'm just kind of cleaning stuff out 
but you can see here's a good example, right? That's a solid deck plywood there. That's what's used throughout this camper and in the flooring um, and the roof as well. Um, these campers have a what Jayco calls a Magnetrust roof system, which has a really high payload capacity on there. If I can't even remember off the top of my head, but it's several thousand pounds of weight on the roof, um, which is good to have just for the sake of if a tree limb or something falls on your camper, um, a strong roof structure. Also, the way it's vaulted, it's insulated, and I find this thing actually heats pretty well for just being a three-season camper. Um, other things on the outside to note on these guys, um, they have these <clears throat> these um, stable steps that flip down. They put the weight on the ground for when you step in and out of the camper. You don't get the camper rocking. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to have that as a feature. Um, walk on roof with a ladder. Um, these do have an outside shower. Like I said, though, this isn't really a, a lot of bells and whistle camper, and that's actually what I kind of like about it. Outside shower here, you have a black water flush, city water connection. That's where your power goes for your shore power, fresh water um, intake here. Also have your exhaust for your furnace out here. Another access to your pass-through storage on the front. We did option a second battery on this guy. Um, normally they just come with one. So let's step inside and talk a little bit more about some of the stuff on this guy. Okay, stepping inside. One of the defining attributes of this model camper is the fact that it's a non-slide. Um, for us, um, really come to be concerned about all the features and things that can go wrong on a camper, especially when you're going to own it for a long period of time, and the mechanisms on the slides, the way they seal up, um, maintenance on them, things that can go wrong when you're on the road, um, the added complexity, the added weight. For us, um, it's, we wanted to get back to like a no slide camper and that's what this one is. Um, but when you get into a lot of no slide campers, um, sometimes space is kind of at a premium. Um, one thing I really like about this layout is that it's actually relatively spacious. We have, we're a family of five. We have three small children and well, the oldest is now 10, 10, eight, and four. And being able to have five people coexist in a camper um, without a slide, um, sometimes there's some compromises, you know, and, and in this, the pinch points really, you know, between the dinette and the kitchen area, but still it's actually works out pretty well. Um, this camper comes in at 29 and a half feet long. And for a camper in that class, um, in a bunkhouse, having a couch is a really big deal um you'll see some smaller campers or in this size um, range roughly that um they'll have the dinette booth maybe a u dinette bunk beds and a bed for, for the parents and the biggest issue you don't really consider if you're new to rving and camping is well on a rainy day where does everybody hang out well, you know, besides the dinette, it's going to be in their beds. And sometimes that becomes pretty cramped. So this is actually a pretty li livable um, space because you have seating here on the couch, the dinette, the beds, the bunk beds, which are back in that corner. And it actually, it works out pretty well. We, we're all pretty comfortable in bad weather in this, in this unit. Um, some campers I've also found too, that the couches look great when you're looking at a video and doing a walkthrough and stuff, but they're actually in reality, not super comfortable. Um, I love this couch. Um, it's a soft material. It's like a faux somewhere, somewhere between like a leather and like a, I don't know, like a velour. Um, it cleans really easy. It stays clean. Um, and it's very comfortable. Um, and it's actually legitimately comfortable for three people to sit on and for an adult to lay across too. The center flips down, um, with some cup holders, um, but we kind of use it like this with our three kids. Sometimes two of them will double up in a bunk and sometimes they'll, one of them will take this couch. Um, the nice thing is this is also a jackknife. So, or a jackknife sofa bed. So just with one hand, you can flip it down and it becomes another place for a bed for someone to, um, be able to sleep here. So that's a nice feature. There's a little storage underneath it too, which is handy. The furnace kind of lives over on this corner of it, um, through the cabinet ducted heating. So let's talk privacy. Um, 
coming from a camper previously that had a separate master bedroom suite with a door, um, we thought, oh, this would be great. We'll have privacy from the kids and, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be really handy to have. Let me just tell you, no matter what camper you have, even with a door and a partitioned off bedroom, there isn't such a thing with small children as privacy, the type of privacy you might be imagining. So this is a great compromise. Um, you have a curtain that can come across. You have a partial wall here on the back of this wall. If you wanted to add one, there's a spot, a hanger here for a quick disconnect for a TV and the cable and the power outlets up there. So you can have a TV in here. And if you want to have like a movie night and have kids watching something out here, the parents in here, you totally can do that. You can separate the rooms if you need it. Um, but you also have the ability on a movie night to watch something on the admittedly small TV up there, but you actually can see it pretty well from the bedroom here. Um, if the, um, kids are on the couch and on the dinette, you can have a movie playing here. You can actually see it clearly from the bed back here too. So that's kind of a cool layout. All the, there's a lot of options for seating, facing entertainment in here. If you want to use it for that, um, lighting package in these are great. I actually don't even have all the lights on, but all led lights, um, Jayco does a good job of putting a lot of lights in these things, so they're really bright. The um, interiors for 2022 had this option for a modern farmhouse. And I think on the 2024s, they have a new color. It's just called Farmhouse or something like that, and it's a brighter white. But it's kind of a distressed white look. Um, one of the reasons we never considered a Jayco prior to this was just because all the interiors were so brown and dark, and I just, they just didn't like them whatsoever. And when they came out with this two-tone kind of... Um, modern farmhouse decor, which has the, the brighter whites contrasted with some darker color cabinets. It actually brightened these things up a ton. And to me, they're a much more livable situation. So I actually really like the, um, interior on this and the, and the colors. It's just bright enough without being, um, sterile. Um, sometimes when you get too much bright white, um, without any contrast, I feel like this becomes really clinical <laughs> and not very warm. Um, Jayco um, is known for having Amish building these cabinets and these units in general. Um, the cabinets are a little bit more sturdier than some of the cabinets we've had in other campers. Um, these are actually maple um, um, doors and faces on some of these cabinets, which are nice. Full slide drawers that come all the way out. I think they're rated for like 15 pounds or 30 pounds or something. They're, they're kind of cool, like how, how over-engineered the drawers are. So that's kind of a plus. Um, like I was saying before, storage is always a key on family campers. Um, on this guy, you know, you are a little bit limited on the inside, but we use these cabinets up here mostly for our pantry. So you have two doors and it kind of passes through in there. Um, and then we keep dishes and things um, underneath the sink here and in the drawers and up above. Um, <clears throat> we do keep... In, in the storage under the, the couch and that outside storage I was showing you, you can actually access it under the bed here. This has piano hinges and flips up. So you can actually get to that. So we'll actually use Tupperware containers for certain items that we can just access from in here. Again, plywood, which is nice. Um, and so that's kind of the handy thing about having that storage. You also have storage underneath both bench seats at the dinette. This converts down to a bed. So there's a useful amount of storage in there, as well as in the bedrooms, it flips up with gas assist struts, and you have a large storage area in here to keep things. So plenty of storage. It's actually great. It works out perfect for all the gear we kind of haul around. Um, <clears throat> bedroom, this is a queen bed, but it's a camp queen, so it's like a short queen. Some people do put a full-size queen, but it's actually kind of nice having the walk through here, and when you put a larger queen mattress in here it tends to uh kind of make it tough tough to scoot through here i actually don't mind it i like hanging my feet off the end of the bed when i sleep anyway i'm six foot um i find this really comfortable um they use like a serta mattress which is i don't know it's decent i guess most camp camper mattresses are pretty awful in general so we put a uh um an amazon foam topper on top of it that we use and it's it's super comfy we've kind of done that with all of our campers um just to make it a nice plush bed to have in here um one area you see on this kind of camper where they save some cost is not cap making cabinets across the top we do is we have a series of these bins we'll put up there 
with uh, the kids' clothes and things like that that we'll keep organized. And it works out fine. They actually never fall off there when we're driving, even on bouncy roads. Um, one thing I do like are these hanging cabinets on the sides. We've had units before that go all the way down, and I thought it'd be more useful to have that space. But now having this, because of this, you actually have more air circulation that kind of moves through here when you have the windows open at night. Um, in our previous campers, it was always really stuffy feeling, kind of up in the head area of the beds. Um, and this actually lets the air move through a little bit easier. So the also the, the front profile of these campers is a little bit more upright than some other style campers that are really swept back. And that gives you a, a more open feeling around your head too, which I don't ever hear anybody mention about them, but I find that it's really useful to know. Um, <clears throat> like I was mentioning the heating, the furnace is underneath the couch. It's ducted down here in the bedroom and on the floor underneath the couch right there. Now, I was concerned about this because we live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We live in a cold area. Um, we use our camper three season. Um, we travel. We, we've gone as far as southern Utah with campers before, and we go on mountain bike trips to other areas. And sometimes in the shoulder seasons, you know, it gets below freezing. And I uh, actually found that it heats really well. The only place that it doesn't heat well or doesn't heat evenly is the bathroom, which doesn't have a vent. Um, but that little vent there <laughs> heats this whole space and compared to our last camper, our Freedom Express, um, it actually, that thing was really chilly in the back, even though the heat vents were farther back in it. And they had a, um, a heated and enclosed underbelly. Despite that, this with an open underbelly, there is an option for an enclosed and heated underbelly now in the brand new 2024s. Um, even without that, once this thing heats up, it's great. The floor doesn't even feel cold. So I am really impressed. The um, ultralight campers with Asdell walls and fiberglass skin, I find, really don't retain heat very well. These actually are, they, they glue in bats of insulation between the siding and the interior wall. And honestly, I, I find a big difference in how well this thing heats and how much the furnace cycles and whatnot. It's very consistent, so I do like that about it. Um, to me, that's another advantage of the stick and tin. The aluminum frames with Asdell, you know, we'd get areas where the stud would be in the wall, where the water would be condensating for moisture, where the aluminum tube was as a part of the frame. Um, also, when you go to these stick and tin campers, you know, you're able to have outlets in the walls, like underneath the table here there's an outlet on the wall because the wall's thick enough to be able to run um, power into. So that's another plus. Um, this is a double sink. We have a little sink cover. Um, not a ton of prep area in this particular camper, but if I really wanted to, I can make a flip up extension here or something like that, but it hasn't been a big deal. It's not a, you know, it's not like an L shaped counter, but it, it kind of works out fine. You just got to kind of plan your prepping and stuff. Sometimes um, maybe we, our last camper had a longer, longer prep surface and you know we don't really miss it honestly it's it, it's funny the trade-offs you take sometimes and the things you think you're gonna miss um pretty much all campers now come with these dc um dc fridges without the propane backup um i thought that would be a bummer but you do gain when you go to these these 12 volt d 12 volt dc compressor fridges you get a lot more interior space in them um because you don't have the propane fixtures and the, uh, it actually allows for more volume. I think this is a 12 cubic foot fridge. It's plenty for a family of five, you know, we'll stock up with stuff in the freezer and the fridge and you can actually fit a lot of stuff in here. Um, nice fridge. It's really quiet. It seems super efficient. It's a Norcold fridge. Um, we have this one of these in our a Norcold fridge in our old sportsmobile adventure van and that thing it's from 2001 and it's still kicking, so I have a lot of faith in that company. Um, you can option some certain things on these campers. Um, this one came with a small flat screen TV. I can't even remember the size of it, but there's my hand for reference. It's it's pretty small, but you know we're we kind of go on trips to go do stuff outside. So this is like a you know crappy day um, option for getting to um, you know watch some stuff via our, our Starlink setup and wi-fi and watch disney plus or something um you also have two zones an inside and outside zone with your bluetooth radio which is kind of cool so you can be chilling out outside and playing tunes on your phone um 
Let's see here. What else can I cover? The beds, the bunk beds back here. These are double bunks, double over double, it's called. Um, the nice thing with the Jayco's that I really liked is each bunk is rated for 600 pounds. Uh, most campers, these double bunks are like rated for 300 pounds. So you could actually have like two adults, each one of these, although that doesn't sound super appealing to me. But um, it's pretty messy in here. It's the end of the camping season and uh, we still have some stuff to clean out of here. But um, the, each bunk has an LED light up there. This one has a, um, a 120 volt outlet and the upper one has a usb outlet which is kind of a bummer because that's the only usb outlet in this camper i think the new 2023 and 24 models have added more usb chargers in here um so there's a 12 volt power supply up there you can put an adapter if you need to do usb stuff um if you're off the grid that's kind of 12 volt powers that are nice to have because in the bedroom it's all the 120 outlets and being able to charge phones and things, it's nice to have um, 12 volt options. So um, for us though, we, we're we not actually going boondocking with this. We have a, a setup that we use for overlanding and boondocking. And we just use this to go to a setup in an area where we wanna go day trip and mountain bike and stuff. And we plug this in, in a, at a, you know, an RV park basically. So we're usually not doing a whole lot of off-grid stuff. I will mention though, um, these do, these are pre-wired for solar. So there's actually a set of plugs on the roof already up there in an area here where some of these will come with it pre-installed. The charge controller will be right here. Um, I think they're set up for 30 amps max and they, you can get a, a setup that the, the Jayco dealer will install on the roof. I have a 300 watt system from our last camper and I'm, I'm probably going to end up dialing that in to put on this thing eventually. Um, if we do some, uh, off, you know, boondocking type camping things, but honestly, like if I'm going to go out in the back country, I don't want to drag a travel trailer. I want to go backpacking or take our, our van or something. Um, so let's see bathroom on these are, are I kind of like this one advantage here is you have the uh, the sink on the outside of the bathroom, so you can have kids brushing their teeth and washing up before bed. And someone going potty in here, and they're not. There's less of a lineup, I find. Um, it's got the small shower tub setup. If you have kids, these are great. Um, <clears throat> you know, because our children will bathe in here. They'll actually take baths in here, and they they still fit in there, and it's fine. It's great. Little kids, babies, infants, toddlers wonderful to have um really tall i'm six foot tall and my head when i'm standing here doesn't even make it into the um the, the skylight up here so they also use um solid plywood underneath these a lot of, some campers will have osb underneath the tubs and from the flexing of it the uh p-traps and the tubs will come loose and they'll slowly leak and just rot out the whole back and you won't even know it until there's a major problem um one thing that i wish was a little bit better in here this is a plastic throne um uh, maybe someday i'm gonna update to a porcelain one um i like i like the porcelain foot flush toilet it's a little bit better but you know what it does the job it's nothing fancy but it's, it does the job so yeah not a huge bathroom but it's functional it works um the double over double bunks with a bathroom in the back next to them tend to have smaller bathrooms so it's kind of be expected um so yeah overall that's kind of the tour of the inside now, getting back to why I think this is a great camper, um, it's simple. It's really easy to winterize. It's really easy to troubleshoot problems. Um, <clears throat> it's light. This camper dry weight is 4,700 pounds. The frame that they use on these Jayco's, the A-frame in the front is actually, they make their own frames um, instead of some companies that buy their frames from other companies like Lippert. And the A-frame the, where the tongue is on the camper is actually welded and integrated into the first two channels of the frame and so that the benefit of that is the whole camper sits two inches lower so most of the a-frames um have the frame sitting on top so the campers sit really high like our freedom expresses were really tall campers especially our last one this thing has a much lower profile um our last camper was 6200 pounds dry weight ultra ultra light camper at 33 feet this is 29 and a half feet and 4700 pounds and let me tell you this thing tows like a dream, um, especially compared to our last one. I don't even, we have a half ton Silverado that we use um, with a, it's 
close to 10,000 pound payload or towing capacity, I mean. And um, it tows like it's honestly not even really there. It has a sway control system and weight distribution. And with that, there's zero uh, issues with the, the trailer swaying, even in high crosswinds. So um, that's great. I love that about it. Um, the truck doesn't work hard at all. Um, it's just a great setup. So yeah, advantage to me, stick and tin, it's simple. The buy-in price is cheap. You know, there's, especially nowadays, in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of new really high-end, like, overland campers, travel trailers. And you know what? Like, yeah, that that might be your cup of tea, but if, if we're going to go off-road into the boonies, you know, we, we've been over, I've been overlanding since the early 90s, before the term really came. And we have a four-wheel drive sports mobile, and that's what we take when we want to get back into the backcountry and go on big trips do some fun adventures and travel off-road um i would take no pleasure in dragging no matter what size an rv off-road and some of those new trick suspension you know smaller but off-road capable packaged campers oh man this i don't think that would be very fun and on top of it they're crazy expensive especially when you get into the custom the really trick suspensions on them and stuff so you know i think this camper, for a long time, you could always get these for like nineteen, twenty thousand dollars. I think this one we bought it last year. The retail is twenty-seven. The way this was optioned, we got a, a small deal on it. Um, everything's gone up since COVID and the pandemic, but you know, compared to what everything else is going for right now, this is on the bottom end of the spectrum. But it's just the right balance where you have enough size to have room, comfort, storage. It's cheap. It's one of the cheapest campers in their lineup as far as cost to entry. And I don't feel bad if it gets beat up a little bit on a trip. You know, it's got steel wheels. I love it. I love steel wheels. And one plus I forgot to mention is that it comes with Goodyear Endurance um, travel trailer, trailer tires, trailer tires on them. And these are the best in the business um, pretty much. Most pretty much... I don't know, 98% of the new campers that you buy, travel trailers, they come with these really cheap, crappy tires that it's pretty much universally recommended. You just take them immediately, replace them, and throw those away because they're garbage. These come with great tires, and these are the ones I upgraded our old campers to, um, and it comes right with them. So tires are really important. Pretty much all new campers come with terrible tires that I wouldn't recommend using at all. One more feature I forgot to mention while I'm down here. They uh, use stainless steel to line the wheel liners in case you have a blowout and to reduce, um, you know, rocks and things damaging the underside of the camper. Um, but yeah, so for me, the cost of these things, price of entry, the way it tows, um, you could say the build quality, the materials they use, the storage capacity, the simplicity, and that's why I think this is a great camper. Um, this is also always billed a lot as a um, as like a entry level get into travel trailer life camper. But honestly, if you have an active lifestyle and you want to get into something that you can take around and go to places like mountain bike destination towns, things like that, where you want to hang out and ride and have all the comforts of home, but it's not too big, it's not too small, and it's not too much pain in the butt to work on, I think it's a really great option. So that's kind of my two cents on it. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. I'm starting out a page. I've got some stuff I'm going to cover on our farm here, our farmstead. If you're into old tractors or old vintage German cars, uh, adventure vans, traveling, things like that. Farmsteading, homesteading, mountain biking, skiing. Uh, man, I got a ton of stuff I want to cover. So, anyway, uh, this is our 2022 Jayco 264BH. And um, yeah, I think consider going with a simple, cheaper camper that fits your needs versus, um, you know, spending double, triple for something that's, from my experience, kind of takes away from the trip and other things you can be doing with your time and money so have a great day and i uh, hope this answers some questions for you